Welcome to another scriptural word study. As always, please place your computer screens on full view to obtain the complete value of the scriptural information being shared, along with the associated information. We continue to be extremely thankful for the love, joy, and peace of those who assemble in the name of the Almighty Yahuwah and the name of the Messiah Yahushua, and as such, for their ongoing scriptural studies they share in the way of Yahuwah. The way of Yahuwah is not for everyone, as we are learning. As words, names, and the law make people of the world very, very uncomfortable. Why? Because it challenges each and every one of us daily to continue to unlearn the lies we have already learned from this world, let alone the lies of its world religious programming systems. The set-apart way of Yahuwah, as per the scriptures, is captured, found, and gleaned in scriptural words, names, and the law, including the calendar, that hangs in the Shamaim, or heavens that no person can manipulate. This scriptural fact can be gleaned from many of the books contained in the scriptures, as per the book of praises now known as the Psalms today, as it states in the above chapter, 119 verses 130 to 133. And this is why we and others in the name which is above all names continue to share scriptural word and name studies, on this wonderful highway in the way of set-apartness. And why we cannot wait to see other scriptural word studies from those that assemble in the name of the Messiah Yahushua, that are being completed in preparation of each and every Sabbath. We remain thankful of this refreshing rest that is ever more experienced as we learn to eliminate our own words. So in this scriptural word study, we will explore how the world corrupted the name and title of this precious book. Because most are not aware that this book is actually called the Scriptures, whenever the book is spoken of as a whole from those who desire to be in the way of Yahuwah. This book was named as the Scriptures by the Messiah Yahushua himself and his disciples. Notice the reference from the Messiah Yahushua himself about how he personally ensured that he shared the words of his father with his disciples. Notice as well that the Messiah Yahushua does not pray for the world, but requests from his father personally to guard his disciples in his father's name, in which he carried in his own name too. And notice how the Messiah Yahushua was guarding his disciples in his Father's name so that the scripture might be fulfilled. The Messiah Yahushua was not promoting a world religious denominational Bible, but the scripture. Because all scripture is breathed by his Father, the Almighty Yahuwah, as the word shares in so many places. In fact, we find this precious book designated under the name the scriptures in 54 places, once in Daniel chapter 10 verse 21, and 53 times it appears in the renewed covenant, and or messianic scriptures, which regrettably is now known today as the New Testament. But that is another scriptural word study, Yahoo willing, at a later date. Scripture was the word used by Luther as a designating title for his German translation of the scriptures. It is true, although, that parts of scripture or individual books are called books or scrolls, which are known as the words Biblos or Biblion in Greek. But the words Biblos or Biblion in Greek both only refer to individual books or sections of the scriptures and is nowhere used to designate the complete writings as we know of the scriptures. This substituted word for the scriptures was first used in 400 CE. Thus, this designation for the scriptures was a later introduction, 
Why then was the scriptural designation for the complete book, namely scriptures, substituted with a Hellenized word, Bible? The common story that has been told to us is that biblion, or plural biblia, denotes any kind of written document, originally written on papyrus. This Egyptian papyrus reed came from Egypt and was imported through the Phoenician seaport Gabal, which the Greeks called Byblos or Byblus. This seaport, Byblos, was the home of the Phoenician sun deity, according to S.H. Langdon, Mythology of All Races, Volume 5, page 351. This seaport, or city, was also known to be a city which was founded by Baal Kronos, as well as the real seat of Adonis, where a large temple of Adonis once stood. The Isis and Osiris cult, both sun deities, also became popular in this city later on. Further evidence was found when we read that the sun god is associated with the Lady of Byblos, in a letter from Tel El Armana. W. H. Roche, in his book, states that this ancient city, Byblos, in Phoenicia, as well as the city Byblos in Egypt, was named after the female deity Byblos, also called Bible, also called Byblis. This female deity was the granddaughter of Apollo, the well-known Greek sun deity. As we can see, the scriptures, which we so dearly love and cherish, has been given a shameful name derived from the female deity who was the granddaughter of the sun deity, Apollo. Pagan worship was generally known to have some sensuality to draw the carnal minds of the masses. And here again, we find that this female deity, Biblis, was described as a nymph from the book Gilbert Meadows, an illustrated dictionary of classical mythology, and as well from the book Edward Tripp, Crowell's Handbook of Classical Mythology, both under the name Biblis. The scripture is clear about establishing a matter with two or three witnesses. But in this case, once again, like so many scriptural word studies, we have many, many more witnesses than needed for truth to be surely known without doubt of any kind. And we have a confident expectation that many will ignore this information as they have a desire to remain in the world with its world religions. Scriptural words... Names and the law, including the calendar that hangs in the Shamayim, the heavens, is challenging indeed for us all. But hallelujah indeed for the highway called the way of set-apartness that can set us free from the bondage of mankind. So again, we cannot wait till others who gather in the name of Yahushua glean even more scriptural words and names that can help us to become further on the highway of set-apartness, away, far, far away from this world. Remember, the world and its world religions are counting on you to ignore and even discount the importance of scriptural words, names, and laws. So let us not support this world and its world religions any farther than we regrettably already have. The Greek word Bible is from a human language. The vast majority of its vocabulary was formed when the Greeks were still a pagan nation, having the names of their numerous deities freely used in various applications. This was not only the case with the Greeks, but also with all other non-Hebrew nations who did not have the words, names, law, and calendar of Yahuwah to mold their words correctly in order to be set apart from the world. And thus why the prophecy for the end times comes to us clearly in Tesephonia, in which his name originally meant hidden by Yahuwah, which was changed and Hellenized into Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 9. Quote, For then I shall turn unto the peoples a clean lip, so that all of them may call upon the name of Yahuwah to serve him with one shoulder. End of quote. 
So in the meantime, let us do our best in love, joy, and peace in further learning and sharing the pure lip, which is sometimes known as the clean lip as it relates to scriptural words and names. Hallelujah! There will be a day when all the peoples of the world will know him by the one name with which he revealed to Israel. And even better yet, which his son, the Messiah Yehushua, made known to his disciples. The Messiah Yehushua also promised to make it known to us too, as we can read in these scriptural verses. But, regrettably, like the religious leaders of times of old, and as it is today, there is still diligent and calculating effort by those who remain in the world and its world religions to hide, conceal, and usurp the name which is above all names, let alone his pure and clean words that he received from the Almighty Yahuwah himself. But hallelujah, the light continues to shine through the darkness, thanks to the few who indeed attempt at their best and their best efforts in the name to guard the word. The Messiah Yehushua had begun to separate and to cleanse his assembly with the washing of water by the word, even cleansing his set-apart assembly from these names of pagan idols such as Biblis or Bible. And yes, some will still attempt to ignore and discount these scriptural truths that we have shared with far more than two or three witnesses. But again, those that ignore and or discount scriptural truths are the ones that still have a desire in part or whole to remain in the world and its world religions. As always, we pray that these scriptural word studies provide value to you and your loved ones. Till next time, Yahuwah willing, thank you for allowing us to share in the name which is above all names.